Hello, and thank you very much for having me along to talk about the Scottish Marine Environmental Enhancement Fund. My name is Sarah Brown, I'm the manager of the fund, and I'm excited to tell you about what we've achieved so far, what we're doing as we go forward, and hopefully entice you to come and join us in this exciting journey. First of all, I'd like to take a step back and answer the question, what is SMEEF? So the ambition of SMEEF is to have a long running substantial fund which harnesses the power of private money, combines it with public sector knowledge and strategy and creates a meaningful positive impact for Scottish coasts and seas. OK, that sounds like a great ambition, but what's the reality of actually putting it into practice? Well, it took 18 months of policy and procedural development in order to reach the formal launch in May 2022. Since then, we've been able to allocate £3.3 .3 million worth of grants and we've released our first impact report, which you can find on our website, www.smeef.scot. I'm delighted to say that we're currently negotiating around about £4.5 million worth of uh, donations into the fund, and that is all from private sources. But there's absolutely no resting and, and no waiting. We are always seeking new donors. So if you're at all interested, please pick up the phone or send me an email and let's get in touch and have a chat about what we're doing. A few words about the SMEEF decision making structures. We've got a fantastic steering group that's comprised of the Marine Directorate of the Scottish Government, Nature Scott and Crown Estate Scotland. They're in charge of overall decision making, they set policy, they agree the criteria for the grant giving and they decide on what money is um, we're able to accept and so on. They are supported by two further structures. We have the Ethical Contributions Board that makes recommendations to the steering group about proposed contrib contributors. And we also have an expert grants panel that likewise makes recommendations to the steering group uh, based on the grant criteria that the steering group have agreed um, about grant distribution. We've got further three structures that we work with. We've got the Contributors Forum, and they discuss issues of relevance, share knowledge and kept informed about progress. And that does what it says on the tin. So if you're a contributor, you get to be part of the Contributors Forum. We've got a general mailing list. Please do sign up for it. All you need to do is email info at smeef.scot and you'll get all of our latest updates. And we've got an academic network that we work with as well. And that's largely through the MASTS network. So the 3.3 million, where's that gone to and where did it come from? In 21-22, we were able to get an allocation from the Nature Restoration Fund, and that was almost three million pounds in itself. But it resulted in 45 projects, pipeline projects, all around the country, um, funded through several different grant giving rounds. By 2022, on the basis of the success of those grant rounds, we have been able to secure pledges of nearly 300,000 pounds and we were able to undertake our first fully privately funded grant round, and that resulted in a further 10 successful applications. Our focus has always been on incubating um, enhancement projects and, and helping them to, to achieve their ambitions. And so a lot of that money has been spent on project development, baseline survey, securing equipment, that kind of thing. But our grants have been from anywhere from £5,000 to nearly half a million pounds and some of them run for up to three years. We do our level best to fund impactful projects, and I just thought I'd walk you through what some of those look like. So from a seabird's perspective, let's start on the, on the right hand side there. There's some fairly run of the mill programs such as buying turn rafts now, where you put your turn raft and all that sort of thing is far from run of the mill, but they're fairly familiar programs and they could possibly be funded by a, quite a wide range of donors. What SMEF, our unique space is, is that SMEF will fund uh, more um, uh, innovative techniques. For example, the remote sensing done for looking at seabird populations um, there on the, the right hand side, or perhaps tree mallow removal in some fairly inaccessible areas um, of inch mickery. Going across to marine enhancement, uh, mobile species and deeper seas work, I've picked three examples here that give an idea of the breadth of projects that we fund. So there's the Scottish Marine Animal Stranding Scheme, their new northern hub, ready to accept carcasses from cetaceans that have been stranded so that they can autopsy them and work out what went wrong. 
or the British Divers Marine Life Rescue where their new rapid response vehicle will allow them to get out to the strandings hopefully before they end up being uh, subject to um, necropsy in this mass facility. And of course there's the Hebridean Whale and Dolphin Trust helping them stay up to date by getting that app updated. Some of the, these programmes would never be eligible for funding from uh, regular donors um, so well, SMEF is very proud to fill that funding gap for these much needed pieces of work. Under coastal enhance enhancement, there are three examples here. For example, on the left hand side there, there is a, a project where a, a survey has been done, an assessment has been done to look at is it possible to allow um, uh, seawater encroachment in a particular area. Or there's another project that we funded that was about sand dune repair and replacement. Or even more innovative and perhaps again very difficult to fund in more traditional funds is the installation of reed bed facilities in the Canting Basin in Glasgow with the Glasgow Science Centre. And that's been very successful in proving how um, a, a relatively uh, not non-biodiverse environment has been enhanced by the addition of man-made um, facilities for nature and how they've made the most of that since their installation. Under seabed enhancement, some examples, uh, core sampling for seagrass to look at just the carbon storage percent potential, carbon sequestration potential, but also things like data loggers to look at the, the potential for seagrass restoration in the Solway Firth. Or there's another project there which was looking at baseline survey to establish the existing native oyster population, the relic population, and then to assess the genetics um, and the appropriateness for restoration. So you can see there's quite a breadth of projects that we've funded so far. And there's one category here that I haven't gone into yet, and that's research. Strategic data gaps exist all over the place, and we have quite a long list that our colleagues in Scottish Government and Nature Scott have been able to supply us. Um, but one of the ones that we're particularly proud of is uh, our Nature Enhancement Marine Offshore Energy Sites, or NEMOs for short. NEMOs is going to report in the next 18 months or so, and it's looking very specifically at what happens in the offshore environment or trying to predict in the offshore environment what will happen when structures go in and how nature will react to those. Again, I don't think this is something that could be funded from more traditional funding sources and the independence that SMEF provides um, has allowed that project to go ahead. Another piece of work that we are quite proud of is the restoration toolkit. Um, there are some barriers to restoration and enhancement in Scottish coasts and seas and access to knowledge and understanding the landscape is one of them. There are a lot of coastal communities that maybe um, are very brand new to coastal um, and marine enhancement and the toolkit is there to help guide them through what their options might be and how they can go about, uh, for example, the consenting and licensing landscape. So you land on the homepage um, and great credit to Crown Estate Scotland for funding this particular work. Um, uh, and then you go in and we've boiled it down to five different topic areas. You've got restoration and enhancement, so looking at different species and what their potential are. Um, permissions, so that's licensing and consents, like I say. Setting up a monitoring scheme, what funding options might be available to you and, and what stage might your project need to be at to secure funding. And then looking at engagement and how important that can be for your programme as you go forward. OK, so maybe it's just a website, but actually the important part of this toolkit is that you can create a checklist so you can share that with your entire team. And a community group, for example, can share the burden of investigating some of these complex areas and coming up with um, uh, an enhancement programme plan. So our aim is to maximise donations. Our, our obligation really is to maximise donations to marine enhancement whilst providing the absolute highest integrity for both donors and grantees. So how do we go about doing that? Due diligence is absolutely key. So for donors, we have got three different areas that we look at. We have standard due diligence, which goes background checks and establishes the viability of a particular organisation. Should that bring up any red flags, we then have the ability to do enhanced due diligence, which means that we can go back for them further than five years in an organisational record if we need to. 
Should we wish to, or should the um, in the Ethical Contributions Board decide that it's necessary, we can do extended due diligence. And that takes in scope one, two, and three emissions, and also assesses the quality of a just transition plan if one's available. Coming on to due diligence on grantees, this is more subtle art, and of course it will require us to look at things like the credibility of proposals, um, and that will be partly down to the feedback from the experts grant panel that I mentioned earlier on. We of course have appropriate governance um, uh, arrangements in place, and a lot of that rests on the experience of Nature Scott and their uh, long history of grant giving. We provide support and advice to programmes, for example, through the toolkit, but other advice is also available. And we do regular reporting. We, we require regular reporting from those grantees. And finally, we encourage networking and collaboration. So what's so different about SMEF? Well, I like to think we're passionate about what we do. We're effective in how we do it. We're science based. And of course, we're embedded with government and advisors. Yes, but what really makes us so different? Well, hopefully it's because we know the industries we're working with. And that's not just the offshore wind industry. There's a whole range of industries that we're working with. And we have close relationships with all of our colleagues at Nature Scott, Crown Estate Scotland, and with the Scottish Government that allow us great insights into those different sectors. We provide incubator funding to support the emerging marine enhancement needs and we de-risk marine enhancement, resulting in businesses and communities being able to do what they need to do to help both the climate and environment emergencies. I'm going to wind up here by saying just a huge thank you to all of the SMEF contributors. These are the ones that have filled the grant pot at the moment, but there's also a list of seed funders on our website as well and you can see the link there. And if you want to learn more about this award winning, and I do say we are award winning, um, thanks to Nature of Scotland Awards, where we got highly commended this year, and also as finalist at the Green Energy Awards. But if you want to know more about this award winning marine en enhancement nature finance programme, bit of a tongue twister, please do email me manager at smeef.scot, ask any questions you'd like now, or phone me on the number there. Thank you very much.